Hello, all, especially you rainbow fish fans. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple tips here on the secret history living inside of your aquarium. And uh, hopefully these little tips will help, uh, especially rainbow fish uh, breeders uh, who are new to this, or uh, anybody who's breeding uh, fish that spawn onto a mop. Uh, this information can be useful. So, let's start off a little bit of backstory here. Now, I have in here a, uh, it looks like uh, that there's a snail in here, but he's on the underside. I have a, an egg that is at two weeks. I have another egg that is at, also at two weeks. All of the other eggs that were in this batch had hatched, and now... Anybody who hadn't or who was not fertilized has turned, you're seeing through that, has turned, uh, has rotted, has turned clear and full of uh, either bacteria, fungi, or both. Usually when you see it milky like that and puffy film around it, that is uh, some sort of fungus, and those are the... the spores so it has actually taken over the the body of the uh, egg and the protein in there so the other thing I wanted to show you because it's the nighttime and you can see it pretty well with the light at this angle and this is when I change it again but with any uh, tray you're gonna get a substance buildup now so I use another little tool for a trick and that is a paintbrush and I just use a little cheapo 99 cent paintbrush doesn't need to be good uh, but what you do is you roll it you roll it like this hold it between uh, your thumb and another finger whichever is comfortable and you're able to go in there and get the egg off of things by rolling it and picking it up now if that doesn't work you can always use your pipette which I cut uh, oversize. I also use this to pick up mosquito larva. Um, and as you can see, it also would work if you, I don't know if you can see here this little shrimp. Let's see if I can get him without scaring him. Uh, it's hard, hard. My depth perception is off when I am. But there we go. So, as you can see, it's also an easy way and a less disturbing way than chasing around shrimp in a tank or net. Uh, these things are cheap online. You get them for like a penny a piece. Usually at this, the, the fish shop, they're, I don't know, a buck, 50 cents, whatever they are. But even if you're paying a buck, it's worth it. It's a useful little tool. You can reuse it for a lot of things. I recommend using different ones for different things sterilizing them, riding on them, keeping them next to one tank, whatever it takes to remember that. So the pipette is a versatile and useful tool. So for instance, this is my tool of choice for picking up the, um, the eggs which have rotted and that way you spread the spores less, but instead of compressing the bulb, uh, when you're already in the water like so you want to do it ahead of time which seems like common sense maybe but then you're just pulling in so that way you're not uh, spraying the spores all over the place in there now this also works to get this is protein uh, as well as other things that have gathered on the top and it works kind of a little bit I mean you can do this it's time-consuming to get um, that film off of here and you can put it back in the tank at large and then you want to refill this with fresh water now another note is you do not want to use prime or dechlorinators um, you know whatever brand you may be using it doesn't matter the brand turns out that the sulfides in there actually bond to the eggs which um, on the outside of the egg membrane that keeps the little fishies safe the egg yolk sacs and things 
that they actually have a, a property in them that bonds very similarly to some of the ammonia and chlorine and chloramines uh, substances and it what it does is prime doesn't get rid of those things what it does is it so pretend this pipette is uh, let's just pretend it's ammonia the, the back end of it and my hand is prime so prime comes in and sticks a few pieces around it so now instead of this fitting perfectly in here and causing damage like ammonia can burning gills and things now it does this and nothing can really happen with it now that does break down into its constituent parts or can even turn back into uh, it, uh, certain elements before so when it says it's rendering something safe there's a time limit on that usually depending on the substance and the dechlorinator uh, most all of them use sulfides uh, or uh, uh, what are they? They're either sulfur oxide or sulfur hyd hydro hydrosulfides, um, one or the other usually, um, like complex and multiple versions of them. So like I was saying, you can use that to get the sk to skim your layer, but that doesn't work as well. Um, other things uh, I've tried that seem to work pretty well, I mean obviously you can just pour it off, that's what I do most days. But I was just curious if there was any tool or, or trick or anything like that that might help. Um, one thing I've used in the past is I've just used uh, paper too, like a paper towel. You can just lay a paper towel or a piece of paper down in there and uh, carefully you can lift off most of it. So you got a couple options and then that is a little bit better. But see, it's reforming already. So. Your best option is going to be to change almost all the water and just really watch out for your eggs. Uh, make sure you're not pouring them out. Now, last tip in this thing uh, that I hope is helpful. If you're having problems with rot, I do for some reason in my water. Um, I don't with a lot of eggs, but some species I really have problems with rot. If you're having problems with rot, get some clean filter floss. Now this trick only works when it's new. Uh, when, when you've got fresh ingredients, don't, don't use this for weeks on end. Um, so what you do is you get yourself some fresh filter floss and you pull it apart like you're making a spider web for Halloween decorations if you guys have done that or fake snow or whatever, uh, fake frost for the windows that they use this same stuff for. Um, but you can use this or you can use uh, true wool um, but don't use cotton it'll get moldy and attract uh, bacterial growth but the acrylic stuff will not and so what I do is I get some of this and then once I extract my eggs my eggs the fish's eggs uh, the RU2s is specifically what's in here right now once I extract those I will then place them on the tip so I'll get them on the tip of the paintbrush so let's just uh, let's just pretend let me find here's a good egg here so this works better once you've got them off out of water let's see if it'll work in water so come on focus all right so it's not gonna work underwater um, but it works great uh, when there's the capillary action of just two wet substances out of water you can just roll a paintbrush a little circular paintbrush and it'll pick the egg right up but then what you would do this wouldn't be wet yet but you'd roll right into it and then kind of give it a little swirl like that and then that way it's kind of under something and in something and for some reason then the eggs don't jostle around uh, the spores on the ones that do go bad like these two over here that have gone bad not the snail on the outside the spore right here or the egg right here and the egg right here that have gone bad um, then you don't have to deal with uh, them floating around or if this is moving in your in your tank at all you don't need to worry about that at all. So, what am what am I gonna do next? So the next thing I'm gonna do, 
that is the last trick of the video. Let me try to do this one-handedly. You're going to get the Blair Witch Project effect going here for one moment. Um, is I get my, uh, my trusty pipe at. If I can figure out where I put my trusty pipe at. See, it's great when you have a trusty tool, a trusty pipe at. Uh, but it's only as great as you trust yourself in where you put the tool. Um, so, so in any case, I'm going to get the eggs out of get the eggs out of their little uh, incubator. I suppose I suppose that's the right term. And I'm going to just take a little bit of water, clean water first. And I'm not using tank water. I'm not using distilled water. I'm just using uh, I don't know what to call it, plain, plain water, just uh, aged water, and right now I'm using up a, uh, an API tube that I don't use for any testing, so it doesn't have chemical remnants in it, and I'm going to grab one egg, and I can see where it's at, so I don't want all that water, but I'm going to put that egg that should have hatched into the beaker he's gonna fall in you can actually see his little eyes they look like ginormous compared to the size of his body and you can also clean up clutter and debris if somehow some of it ends up in your tray um, you can clean that up this way too so here's another one this egg is an interesting case in that I don't know that this is a viable egg. It grew and it had eyes and everything, but then it folded in half, sort of. So at this point, there's nothing to lose by trying to force it open. So now we've got them in there. I happen to know that there's nothing else incub incubating in here right now, and I would get more filter floss for the next round of eggs, which I'll be pulling them off soon. Um, but I'm just pouring this out. And then I'm just going to go to a different part of the tank because I haven't used Dechlor on this tank for well over a week. So I can use this water for now. Um, it's our, All the Dechlor has already bonded with anything it's going to bond with in the past. So then what you do is you take this, this vial and if you need to go to a different tank you can close the top or whatever you want to do. But what you're going to do is you're going to go over to a tank and you're going to, let's, let's see if we can get these guys up close so you can see little round guys. So you've got a couple options. You can close the tube, put it in your pocket and walk around for a while. Now this is cichlid breeders have been using this trick for a while. Fill the, the um, I'd fill the tube up a little bit more than than this just so you're not getting a violent jostling action but what you want to do so you're walking around you're walking around and uh, that action will cause the egg to open if it's ready but it's just gotten stuck especially if dechlorinator has caused it to get stuck oh look at that junk I had to move a bunch of things I had nowhere to put them um, but the next trick, this one, is my favorite because it works the best, I've found. So we've got our eggs in here. Let's see if they're... Okay, both of them, not open. So we're going to look at this tank, which is it's not super deep. But we're going to put the vial in here. You make sure that it's pretty full when you put it in there. So that the pressure of the the so that the eggs don't uh, go exploding out when they feel the differential, and so now we've got our test tube in there, and that's under a couple pounds of pressure because every so I don't know the increment, but let's just say every inch you go down, the pressure increases, you know, x amount. So it works best if you have a really deep tank. Upstairs I have a tank that's even deeper. It's like a, a 28 inch drop. So then what you're going to do is you're going to cap it under water. If you can do this one handed while I'm filming. You're going to cap it under water. 
and bring it up. <clears throat> Let it drip dry for a sec, or you can give it a little shake, whatever. You're going to get shake and fry syndrome. But the deeper you go, you can do this, if you can do this under like two or three feet of water, it usually pops them right away, like they hatch immediately. But what you do is, uh, hold on, let me dry this off. So, let's have a look at them, see if they've opened at all. So what you do here, and as you can see, come on, let's, let's get something closer in the background so that, or some, something more contrasting. So as you can see, the one egg has already started to open. You see that? It's oblong. The other egg is also, its tail is starting to come out. So instead of waiting and the egg potentially actually strangling your, your, your new soon-to-be fish, this will hatch it. So it's under pressure right now. You can see it's turning itself. And it'll probably start jerking. You can see its tail there right now. Can you see it un trying to unfurl right there? So that re replicates the water turbulence a little bit. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of a shake. Just a little. And let the bubble of air that's in it. Let's see here. The bubble of air that's in it pass by them like this and then set it down one more time and now you can see we've actually got the eggs very oblong just about ready to hatch uh, and it, both of them are so this doesn't always work they have to be ready count how many days your eggs have been in there but then just go ahead and leave them under that pressure for a little while and sometimes they've passed away and you might just be smushing an egg casing with not much in there but it's better than getting your uh, fish trapped see the eye there see that blue eye so these are pseudomagill rainbow fish blue eyes and you can see just that perfect example of its blue eye as that egg was turning. Let's see if we can f see that blue eye again. There we go. Saw the eye on one. And can we see it on the other one? So you can leave them like this for half hour, hour, however you want to do it for a little while. And then come back and check. Um, also, try redo, redoing it again. Uh, you depressurize them. You pop the top on it like so. I always cover some with my finger, just in case, even though the eggs are at the very bottom. I Then I use my thumb. This is another little trick for these test tubes, period. Thumb or index finger. But you use it to deflect so it doesn't do the weird, like, where it drips like crazy this keeps some surface tension and you can kind of ease and regulate how the how the fluid is coming out which is nice so also we're gonna try this one more time and then that is all she wrote folks I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you to death any more than I already have so got that pressure as low as we can get it down there you guys have already seen this, so I don't need to explain. But if there's any tricks that you guys know, please let me know, and then we can all know. I can share them with other folks. And, uh, yeah, this works great for cichlids, rainbow fish, lots of critters out there that this works well for. Um, but I just wanted to show you uh, this handful of operating uh, tricks, uh, operational tricks, I should say. And uh, they should be hatching within an hour or two. Yep, now that one's tail. It just twitched. You guys probably missed it, but its tail is opening. And uh, it'll open up soon. I'm going to leave this uh, in, its, in its former home. 
in the water temperature here. And you can leave these down in the tank uncorked or whatever as long as it's not a fish that's going to eat it or corked. Right, right now the pressure is going to be the same no matter what. But you can leave it in there. Just I'm just trying to keep it at temp, that's all. And uh, just let it sit for a while and it should be good to go. So, alright guys, well I hope you learned a little something. Uh, hope that wasn't too dry for you. And I know it drug on a little bit, but it's hard to do things one-handed. So, if you like that, if that saved you time in the long run, even though it took some time to get here, uh, please like, please subscribe, share with a friend, tell with a friend. Compress that information into a 30 second conversation instead of a video and uh, pass it on that way. Alright you guys, take it easy, take care of your critters, take care of the people around you and yourself, and have a wonderful day. Alright guys, swim on.